Hello friends, I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. I'm the senior leader of Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. And I want to welcome you to Glory Stories. Glory Stories are stories of modern signs and wonders and things that the Lord is doing today. Not stories from ancient times, but modern stories today of the fact that our God is alive and moving. And so the story I want to tell you today is called An Evil Man. And I actually wrote a little booklet on it. This is the, the little small booklet. I wrote this primarily as a, a track for prisoners. But at the end of this message, if you would like a copy of this little book, you can write to the church, to Whole Word Fellowship, and um, we'll mail you a copy of the book, or you can email us and we'll email you a digital copy. It's called An Evil Man. And so here's the story. I met a man back in the 1970s. I was not walking with the Lord. I was in business and um, uh, selling floor covering to big condominium projects in Myrtle Beach. And one of my customers was over many of these condominiums. He purchased many hundreds of thousands of dollars in floor covering and appliances from me. And uh, he, he knew that I knew some people of shady reputation. So he came to me and said, you know, Pitts, I would like to buy a Thompson submachine gun. And you may remember those, you know, the things with the round magazine, you know, they used to use in the 1930s, Al Capone and all that. He said, do you know anybody could, could get me a Thompson submachine gun? I said, I don't know. I'll try and find you one. So I asked around and um, a friend of mine said, yeah, you need to talk to this guy, Johnny. He can get any kind of weapon you want. And so um, he set up this meeting. Johnny came and um, I met him in his vehicle. He had one eye. He was very, very mean, wicked guy. Um, Long story that I'll shorten, you can read it in the booklet, but um, he sold me the gun, I gave it to my customer, but I became friends with the guy. And not too long after that incident where I bought the Thompson submachine gun from my customer, um, I began to get right with the Lord. I started turning toward the Lord and I would talk to, to Johnny about the Lord, but uh, he wasn't interested in the things of God. Nevertheless, we got to be friends, and over time, he told me his story. Remember, when I met him, he had one eye was gone, and apparently it was a result of advanced diabetes. And so this was his story. He had been a prison guard at the Central Correctional Institute in Columbia, South Carolina. It no longer exists, by the way. And as a prison guard, he was, he was just a very mean man. You know, some people get into um, law enforcement for the right reasons. Some people get into that position to exert authority over others. And sadly, Johnny was one of these ones that wanted to exert authority over other men. So he became a prison guard, and he was known for being a, a real hard guard. And so they put him with the career criminals in the prison. They have different sections. They put him in the section with the career criminals. Well, one day, lo and behold, a man got arrested in South Carolina that was a sure enough Italian mafia guy. That was very unusual because um, South Carolina is not known for the Italian mafia. And the guy ended up getting sentenced to this prison, and he was on Johnny's prison block. And so Johnny would see him day after day, and, and one day, the man's attorney approached Johnny on the outside of the prison and said, you know, um, we've got this guy in the prison. Um, we'd like to get him some things like newspapers and magazines. Would you be willing to help him out? And he said, sure. You know, so they gave him some money. He started taking in little contraband items. This advanced over time to him carrying messages back and forth to the attorney. And so one day, the, the mafia guy looks at Johnny and said, you know, you know who I am. Yeah, I know who you are. You know what I do. Yeah, I know what you do. Um, he said, we have decided that a certain man is going to die, and we're going to have him killed. The only question is who's going to do it and who's going to make the money for executing this guy. And so he, he loosely solicited Johnny to, to murder a guy. And Johnny thought about it for a few days and came back and said, you know, I'd like to be the guy that makes that money. And so this began a relationship that Johnny, the prison guard, had a dual life. He became an assassin, a part-time assassin for the mafia. And um, uh, the this, this story, again, is in the little booklet, An Evil Man. But he killed a number of people. These were contract murders for people he did not know. He would get the details on where to find them a plane ticket or whatever to get there, and then he would, would kill the person and go on about his, his normal life. He had a wife and two kids when I knew him. And so time went by and his health got bad with the diabetes. The guy was paroled 
from prison and he had no more offers to function as an assassin. He lost his job at the prison because his health was bad. And uh, when I met him, he was working part-time selling illegal guns and part-time as a handyman carpenter. So I knew him in his declining years. And um, uh, he ended up in the hospital. And while he was in the hospital, he, he thought he'd had a heart attack. It wasn't a heart attack. But they said, you know, your blood sugar spiked up and we'll send you home tomorrow. So he's, he's in the hospital. He's got a pretty good report, thinks he's going home the next day. And that night he had a dream. And in the dream, his bed was surrounded by flames. And in the flames were all the people he had murdered reaching up from the flames to his bed, trying to pull him off the bed into the flames. He woke from this nightmare, called his wife, told his wife to get a police officer who she called a police lieutenant and a chaplain. Johnny gave his heart to the Lord through the chaplain. He confessed to the police lieutenant his crimes and thinking he was physically going home the next day, he laid back down to go to sleep and died during the night. And so this dream occurred the last night of his life, literally the last night of his life. Now, the scriptures say, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us for unrighteousness. Even a man like Johnny on his deathbed was eligible for the mercy of God. And so I wrote the prison track because a lot of men and women in prison feel hopeless. They feel condemned because they've done wrong and they know they've done wrong things and they feel like they don't deserve forgiveness. Friends, none of us deserve forgiveness. The story of Johnny, my, my friend, the evil man, I was a pallbearer at his funeral. He never looked better than the day we buried him. He looked at peace and his wife um, had a testimony of his salvation experience. It was an amazing transition. This happens with the one true God, with the living Lord Jesus Christ. So for you and for anybody you know that you may have thought they're beyond forgiveness, they're beyond redemption, beyond salvation, nobody is beyond the love of God. Nobody is beyond the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. You just have to submit and ask the Lord to forgive you. And so maybe you've never given your heart to Jesus. This would be a good time for you to surrender. Maybe you've never known that he would have mercy on you. He will have mercy on you. Or maybe you have a loved one that you want to remind the Lord of now. Just pray that the Lord would forgive you. Pray the Lord would forgive your loved one. Pray the Lord would draw those that are estranged from him closer and closer, and he'll do it. Thank you, friends, for listening.